Last one up, the Minnesota Vikings. And I got to sit and watch them for quite a while yesterday, which Patrick Sertan showed out for the Broncos, didn't he? Showed out. Now, let's go on through the ads. Again, brought to you by BetUS.com, where the game begins. Link down in the description along with the promo code. Go ahead and check that out. Nine wins is their win total for the season. To go over, minus 125. To go under is minus 105. To win the division, it's number two, plus 225. To win the NFC, they are plus 2,000. To make the playoffs, minus 105. And to not make the playoffs, they are minus 125. Projected favorites, same as the Packers. Nine games that they are projected to be favored in. Their projected strength of schedule, 26th. The 26th most difficult. That's, that's an easy schedule. That's not bad. Which means if it's the 26th most difficult, that means it is like the 6th easiest. And that's based on what they did last season. Six straight win totals going over under last season. They were under. This should be an over. By the way, what I mean in that is it's over, under, over, under, over, under. Last year was an under. It's, say, it's supposed to be no over. What the hell you're yeah. <laughs> Let me explain it that way. It, this year, based on the trends, they should be an over team. And I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you, that's the way that I'm rolling with this. Uh, despite going 0-7 against the spread last season, or to end last season, Zimmer still 68-46-3 against the spread as the head coach of the Vikings. Defense was bad, but they are getting a bunch of guys back from injury, a bunch of guys back from opt-outs, etc. And, and the rookies that they had last season got a ton of experience, so that is definitely good. This is one of those renaissance kind of years where everybody's going to be Glad to be back at home, I believe. The Vikings are going to be super glad to be back home. They went 3-5 and five at home last season. Before the 2020 COVID season, they had been 35-15 and 15 at home under Mike Zimmer. So I think that that's going to be a big deal. Uh, even with Cousins, Cook, Jefferson, and Thielen healthy, the offense was still only number 14 in non-garbage EPA last season, EPA per play. That's not great considering those are like the the four horsemen for them. They were the fourth lowest pressure rate defense in the NFL last year. That is not good. They do get Hunter back this year, but they didn't bring him any help. And I don't know what that necessarily means. Can one guy be that effective? We will certainly see. Now, the question that we have is about Kirk Cousins, right? Does Kellen Mond end up taking over sometime in the season and help take the offense to another level. I I am leaning that way, but I also think that Cousins is not an awful quarterback, and I think that they have a an easy enough schedule. I've got this team going well over the nine. I've got them winning 11 games this year. I trust Zimmer. I like this Vikings team. Wow. So this, this is the biggest we disagree on. Okay. Um, I, I got this team eight and nine. Interesting. I got, I got them under. I got them losing record. I think this might be the year where the Cousins experiment ends and they go to Mon and maybe Mon's just not ready. Not that Mon's bad, but just can't win games. I think they'll struggle. I hope this defense is a lot better than they were last year. They're going to need to be. And they're going to need to run the ball and they're going to need to control the line of scrimmage and they're going to need to try to make big plays in the passing game. But if this team gets down by two scores, I don't know that they have the offense to ever come back and win that. You might be right about that, but when that's I when I look sca- at the schedule, me. I I trust Zimmer enough to be able to get wins against a schedule like this, right? Hey, hang on, hang on, whoa, 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 stop! You're looking at the schedule. I didn't look at the schedule at all. I went and looked at the schedule to see who they're playing, but to look at the quote unquote strength of schedule, strength of schedule is all bullshit. Yeah. How many teams from last year are going to go from worst to first, or not making the playoffs to making the playoffs? Every year it usually flips. Okay, there's usually eight teams that don't make the playoffs that did and eight new teams that do make the playoffs. So that so to look at strength of schedule from previous years knowledge is all bullshit. You have to throw all that stuff out the window. That's the difference is I don't look at that and I don't care. You're not necessarily wrong about that. I I do look at this and I see winnable games on this schedule. And I well, think yeah, there's a bunch of winnable games. Yeah. But will they win them? I will think Kirk they will. Cousins throw the win. Will he throw the touchdown to win the game, or will he throw the the just blood sucking 
uh, interception that actually just sends you just to your knees in tears. Because that's what he does more than anything else. I, I don't rely so much on Cousins with this team. I rely more on Zimmer's defense. And that I think that's... Uh, that's what it's going to have to be. Yeah. I think that's what it's going to have to be. For my projecting to be right, for my prediction, it's going to have to be the defense that steps up. And, and that's what great. it's been. Not, not, not good. Great. And, and here's the other thing. Zimmer, you got to remember. So I love, I love Zimmer. Love Zimmer. Okay? We know this. Okay? I've talked enough about it. Here's the problem with Zimmer. Zimmer's an old school guy. I do not see him going to the young kid. I do not see him want a rookie unless he has to. I don't think Cousins can play his way out of this position. I think it's a situation where it's a COVID situation or an injury situation that Mon has to come in and play. That's what I think. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But they do, do have a new. Wrong? Do you think? Do you think Cousins would be bad enough to let Mon play, or do you think it has to be an injury or a COVID? I think. I think if it's going to be early. It would have to be an injury or COVID. I think if it gets to be the middle of the season and Cousins has not been good, then I think Mond comes in and, and takes this thing over. Like, if they it are winning... Like a very anti-Zimmer thing to do. Yes, it does, but uh, they do have a young offensive coordinator. Clint Kubiak is That's right. the offensive coordinator. So, I do wonder if Zimmer is going to trust his OC enough to, to let him make it. that call. I was just about to say that. He's a young guy, and he might want to. Is he going to have enough influence to walk into Zimmer's office and say, we need to start a different guy? I think his, I think his dad might. Like, <laughs> Yeah, but I'll, dad's not going to make that phone call. <laughs> dad ain't going to make that phone call. Man. This is the big boys now. Yeah. Your daddy ain't picking up the phone and calling your boss. True. Okay. True. That's not how shit happens. Now, you, you ain't wrong there. Anyway, so. I'm just, I love Coach Zimmer, and I like this Vikings team. I just don't trust Kurt at all, at all. I, I, I trust him to be mediocre, which has been good enough to win games and not lose them a lot of times. But when he gets down and has to score to win, he never does. He yeah. always throws the interception. He always throws the interception. It's, it's what made that Saints playoff win for the Vikings a couple of years ago so unbelievable. Unbelievable. He, yeah, because we've because we never. It. He never does that. He's done it once in his life, that one game. You got it. You and then the next it. week, what'd they do? What'd they do? I think they didn't score the first half. No, they did not. Against the Eagles. Yeah, it's it's insane. And I think that game was like 35 to nothing going into the halftime. It wasn't just didn't score. But they were getting their ass beat. Yes. Yes. Which is why I, people can't figure out the Saints. and never have been. We're, so. we're, <laughs> we're, 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 we're big different on that one. We're yeah, we are very big. I, I would say this: I hope you're right, and I'm wrong. Oh, this is this is like the Bears thing all over again. Like, I hope that the Bears are good, but I don't see them being good. And I really think the Vikings are going to bounce back because last season was so ridiculous for them. It was not what you've come to expect from a, a Zimmer team. But there is a world where, when they lost to Fansky to Cleveland, like that offense might have just gone with it. And and if the defense can't bounce back. After last season, like they could be really bad this year. Well, I think well, the floor might be like back. the floor games, might be five or six wins. The game has become so offensive. Yes, it's not that maybe the defense hasn't bounced back. It's just that no defense can be that dominant in the NFL anymore. Yeah, like you need to be a good defense. You need to be a really good defense to slow these teams down. But there's not a lot of defenses out here that are shutting these school teams down. And so you got to be able to score something. You got to be able to make noise somewhere. And Dalvin Cook and Justin Jefferson are great. But at some point in time, somebody else has got to do something because if you just got two guys you got to lock down, that ain't real hard for professionals. No, no, you're you're not wrong. So, um, so let me talk you through my, my my pathway of doing this. Okay. Okay. I over the course of four or five days, we'll we'll look at the schedule. We'll pull up the schedule, and I'll say I think they'll win this game, lose this game, win this game, lose this game, and I put a number down. Okay, and then I look at it again and do it the same way, exact same thing, every time. Usually, I'll always get different numbers, and, and I'll kind of go with what I think is more right than not. The highest number for this team was nine and eight that I came up with. I know that's I know that's rough. That's rough. The lowest number was five. Like that's, that's what I'm world, saying. There's a world where I think the wheels could fall off this thing, which means I would tell you if that happens. As much as I love Zimmer, I'm not going to love Zimmer anymore because he won't be there to love. No, I, there's there's a possibility that. 
if things go really bad, like he yeah. he could be on the outs, which is That's right. And I don't weird want to think. that. I don't want that. I like him as a coach a lot, and I, I say can't say I like this team. I like the Vikings and who they are. I just and they need a trigger man, and I I'm with you. I think Mon needs to play. I and think so, too. Mon needs to play so you can know if we're bad and we have a top eight draft pick next year, do we spend it on a quarterback? Mond has got a rookie quarterback's best friend right there in the trenches. He's got an offensive line that's pretty good, and he's got a hell of a running back. With hell of a Cook. running back. That's so right. he can and lean on that. he's got two pretty good receivers. Yes, man, yes. He did. Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, he's got K.J. Osborne, D.D. Westbrook, uh, Chad Beebe. I mean, yeah. Amir Smith Marset, like he's no. there's weapons. There's dudes. No, there's, no, this is not a bad team. It, it's just I don't know enough about this offensive coaching staff to see how good they are. So we'll just have to see. We will certainly see. I mean, these are just predictions. This is this is what we do. We're just having fun before the real games begin. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.